So you just got a job at a startup and they're offering you equity in the company if you take less money. Should you take that deal? Hey, do me a favor, like, subscribe, leave a comment down below and feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn or Twitter. Okay, so you nailed the interview and that is awesome. And they send you the offer letter and the offer letter is kind of weird because it doesn't specify a salary. Instead, they have three different salaries here and then three different possible equity valuations. What are you supposed to do with this? Now, equity is essentially shares in your company. So if you have equity in your company and you get acquired by another company or your company goes public and issues public shares in an IPO, you can actually get money for the equity in your company. This is how a lot of people in Silicon Valley got rich. So which one of these options should you choose? If you choose option A, you're only getting $80,000 a year, but if your company goes public or gets bought and has a $1 billion valuation, you can get a lot of money out of that. If you go with option C, you're earning more money, but you get a lot less money if your company hits a $1 billion valuation. So what should you do? Well, there's a couple of things to remember. Your equity or your shares are only good if you can find someone else to sell them to. And also keep in mind that 10% of all startups fail in the first year and 90% of all startups fail within the first five years. So essentially you have a 10% chance of your company making it to acquisition or IPO. Now this is actually the same odds as playing roulette and placing a corner bet and hitting. It's actually, you have a greater chance of winning playing roulette because the odds of winning there are 10.8%. So let's see what happens. Let's uh, actually place a corner bet in roulette and spin the wheel. No win. Now here's the other thing I want you to take a look at. Normally in Silicon Valley, you get a four-year option allocation vested with a one-year cliff and then quarterly. So here's what that means. For the first year, you get absolutely nothing. You get zero shares. That's the cliff. And then every year you get one quarter of your total allocated shares up to the fourth year. At the fourth year, you are fully vested. Now, let's say you chose option A. You chose $80,000 a year in exchange for more shares. Well, what motivation does your company have to give you a cost of living raise? Zero, because they know they got you for four years if you want to be fully vested. So let's say the company does give you a cost of living raise of 2% a year, like every other normal company. So after four years, now you're making 86K or 86.5K. And that's better than what you're making before, but your friends are on their second or third jobs and they're making over 100K in their jobs. You're stuck at the same company. So by picking the lower salary and the higher equity, you've essentially missed out on $80,000 over four years. That's a full year's salary that you've missed out on by choosing more equity over more salary. And that's assuming the company even lasts four years. So if you're ever given an option sheet like this, take the highest annual salary option and subtract it by the lowest annual salary option. In this case, that'll give us $20,000. Then I want you to multiply that number by the number of years in the vesting schedule, which should be four years. So now we have $80,000. Then I want you to imagine going to a casino and finding a roulette table and placing $80,000 on a corner bet. Now roulette pays eight to one for a corner bet, which as it just so happens is roughly the amount of money you stand to win if this company gets its $1 billion valuation. If you feel comfortable losing $80,000 on the 10% chance that you might make $650,000, absolutely, take the shares instead of the higher salary. But for everybody else, It's better to go with the higher salary.